Hello, I'm Dr. Sandra Freyhofer, liaison to ACIP. The CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. Welcome to the American College of Physicians 2024 Adult Immunization Video Series. The topic, RSV vaccines for adults. Who needs them and when? RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, is highly contagious. For many of us, it's just a nasty cold. But for the very young and the fairly and very old, Bronchiolitis from RSV can lead to hospitalization, life-threatening pneumonia, even death. RSV kills between 100 to 300 children under the age of five in the U.S. each year. RSV is also to blame for as many to, as 60 to 160,000 hospitalizations each year in those 65 and older. Anywhere from six to 10,000 of them die. But now, for the first time ever, we have two vaccines to protect older adults and two new ways to protect little babies. A maternal RSV vaccine given to mom and a new long-acting monoclonal antibody, nirsevimab, given to baby. There are two RSV vaccines currently available. Both are RSV pre-F vaccines, which means they're based on the RSV fusion protein, RSVF, which is stabilized in a pre-fusion conformation. One by GSK called Orexv contains an adjuvant, GSK's proprietary ASO1 adjuvant, the same one that's in GSK's recombinant shingles vaccine, Shingrix, but only half as much. The other RSV vaccine, Abrisvo, made by Pfizer, does not contain an adjuvant. However, it is bivalent, meaning it protects against two different RSV strains, RSVA and RSVB. Both are extremely effective at preventing serious illness in older adults. Both have now been recommended by ACIP for those 60 and older under shared clinical decision-making, meaning you and your patient have to discuss and decide. Nearly all adults hospitalized with RSV have at least one underlying chronic medical condition. More than 60% of those hospitalized have three or more. The top four conditions include heart disease, obesity, diabetes, and chronic lung disease. Nearly a third of those hospitalized have congestive heart failure. Residents of nursing homes and other long-term care facilities are also extremely vulnerable to RSV outbreaks and serious illness. So are patients with immunocompromising conditions, but unfortunately, patients with immunocompromising conditions were not included in the clinical trials. So how well these vaccines work in this population is unknown. Also, the studies did not include many older adults aged 75 to 80 and above, an age group at highest risk of severe RSV complications. Equity concerns must also be considered. Medical risk factors disproportionately affect certain racial and ethnic groups at earlier ages. CDC's National Health Interview Survey looked at differences in prevalence of multiple chronic medical conditions by age, race, and ethnicity. For those 60 to 65, there was a 10% difference in prevalence of multiple chronic conditions between black adults as compared to those who are white. Starting the recommendations at age 60 rather than 65 helps take this into account. Large trials of those 60 and older were conducted for both vaccines. The study design for each of the vaccines was different, so it's not possible to do a head-to-head -head comparison. However, in each of the respective phase three clinical trials, a single dose reduced risk of lower respiratory tract disease by more than 80% for both vaccines. RSV vaccines appear to provide some protection for at least two RSV seasons. However, vaccine efficacy for both vaccines decreased during the second RSV season. Only a single dose is currently recommended. Studies are underway to determine any added benefit from additional vaccine doses. RSV season typically runs from October through March. Vaccination should ideally occur before the onset of increased RSV activity in the community. Expected side effects include fatigue, headache, muscle aches, and joint pain. But there's an important safety signal concern that needs a closer look. Risk of GBS, Guillain-Barre syndrome, Six cases of inflammatory neurological events were observed in the trials of older adults. 
there was also an imbalance in cases of atrial fibrillation. FDA is requiring post-marketing surveillance for both conditions from both manufacturers. RSV is also the most common cause of hospitalization for infants in the United States, and just about every child will have had it by the time they're two years old. And 79% of children less than two who get RSV had no underlying medical conditions. This means all young infants are at risk of RSV. Pregnant people now have a choice in how to protect their babies. They can either receive a dose of maternal RSV vaccine themselves at 32 to 36 weeks, or their baby can receive a dose of this new long-acting monoclonal antibody, nirsevimab, after delivery. A single dose will last five months, the entire RSV season. There are no head-to-head -head comparisons of maternal RSV vaccine and nirsevimab but understand only a Brisevo, that's the vaccine without the adjuvant, can be given to pregnant people at 32 to 36 weeks and only to those whose babies will deliver during RSV season. For babies born to those who did not get vaccinated, there's Nusivimab, but supplies have been limited. In October, 2023, CDC issued a health alert to prioritize it for babies under six months old as well as for infants with high-risk conditions. American Indian and Alaska Native infants are also in this high-priority group. Their hospitalization rate is four to 10 times that of the general population. Maternal vaccination can be extremely protective for baby. FDA reviewed a study of 3,500 pregnant people, a subset of whom received the vaccine at 32 to 36 weeks of pregnancy. Maternal vaccination reduced the infant's risk of severe RSV by more than 90% in its first three months of life and by more than 76% overall in the first six months after the baby was born. Side effects most often reported by pregnant people include pain at the injection site, headache, muscle pain, and nausea. The big safety concern with maternal RSV vaccination is a possible increase in preterm births linked to vaccination. That's why administration is limited to 32 to 36 weeks of pregnancy while additional studies are being conducted. No cases of GBS or other demyelinating events were reported in trials among pregnant people. However, in the trials, there was an imbalance in the percent of pregnant patients who suffered preeclampsia, 1.8% in the Abrisvo group as compared to 1.4% in the placebo group. That's why FDA is also requiring post-marketing studies to take a closer look at potential risk of preterm births and hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. So what about co-administration of RSV vaccines with other vaccines? CDC's general best practices guidelines say it's okay to give it with other vaccines, but there is some concern that doing so could decrease immune response. A study looking at co-administration of RSV and flu vaccine showed antibody titers for both were somewhat lower with co-administration. Co-administration can also magnify vaccine side effects. Remember, the GSK version, Arexv, contains the same adjuvant as the recombinant shingles vaccine, Shingrix. So it may be best not to give those together. Post-licensure monitoring of giving RSV vaccines with other vaccines is needed and will be helpful. Pregnant people could potentially be eligible to receive RSV, Tdap, COVID, and flu shots all at the same visit. However, another study looking at co-administration of Tdap and Pfizer's RSV vaccine found reduced immune response to the pertussis component. Maternal RSV vaccine is recommended at 32 to 36 weeks of pregnancy. Tdap is recommended at 27 to 36 weeks. So Tdap could be preferably given before 32 weeks and RSV vaccine could be given after 32 weeks. This concludes our update on two new RSV vaccines for older adults and two new ways to protect babies from RSV. These vaccines could be game changers for the very young and the very old and could keep them out of the hospital. For some, they may be life-saving. For the American College of Physicians, I'm Dr. Sandra Freyhofer.